the first uh, video that I sent off. Uh, the main focus is just to go through some general principles now, which Guyton explains. And there are about five odd general principles. Uh, and they're very simple. What the principle number one is that heart uh, chambers are arranged in series. By series, what we mean is what comes in the left side of the heart is basically what ends up, I beg your pardon, what comes in the right side of the heart is the blood which then through the lungs ends up in the left heart of the, lung, uh, of the heart. So for the heart to function, both sides need to work together. This interdependence of the two chambers is basically uh, uh, is referred to as in series arrangement. So the right side and the left side are in series. If the right side works, the left side works. If the right side does not work, the left side will have a problem. Uh, you uh, should have read about heart physiology and how it works during cardiac cycle uh, in the heart uh, physiology unit. Number two, very importantly, the way the tissues are arranged in the circulation, they are not in series. In fact, if you, if you were to just imagine a circulatory system which would go in series, so for example, let's name a few tissues. Let's say um, the GIT, then the muscles, then the skin, and say let's then talk about uh, uh, the brain. If they were arranged in a series, in circulation, then blood would first go to the GIT, then to the skin, then to blood, etc., etc. So this, if only you need more blood in the brain, for example, if you're thinking, then you only want more blood to go to the brain and not to the other areas, uh, to the other tissues. But if you have a you have a series arrange, arrangement of circulation, then blood will need to be increased in every tissue and then this increased blood flow will end up where you actually needed it, the brain in, in our example. So no, it doesn't happen like that. Circulation, unlike heart, circulation is arranged in parallel. So imagine a canal, a water canal, and it's irrig irrigating different fields of uh, wheat and uh, cotton and uh, barley and, and, and so on and so forth. So you want more water or a rice, okay? Rice is important because they need more water. So in my example, let's say the rice field comes up first, then the wheat, then the barley and so on and so forth. And the canal is the same way. So you want more water to be irrigated, to be supplied to the rice field, uh, then medium supply to the wheat, and then even lesser to the barley. What do you do? You just manipulate the tributary, the size, the diameter of the tributary, which is coming from the canal to your rice field. You just make it broader. That's it. You don't need to disturb the wheat or the barley field. Okay? So this is exactly what happens in circulation in, in tissues, that you have the main feeding arteries and they give off tributaries to these individual tissues and based on very important concept, the need of the tissue, the feeding tributary can be dilated or constricted. If it's doing a heavy job, for example, if skeletal muscle has gone into exercise, it needs more blood than when it was at rest, what will happen? The tributary vessels will dilate, okay? They will dilate and supply the extra blood that you require during exercise. When you go back to rest, they will constrict and normal blood flow will resume. This, this whole thing is referred to as parallel, uh, parallel arrangement. So circulation, unlike heart, is arranged in parallel. Okay. Point number three, and this will come up in resistance when we talk about hemodynamics in the, in the third and the last part of the series uh, of the first chapter of Guyton. <clears throat> so the only way, well, one of the only way, the main way to change blood flow in the entire circulation is to manipulate the diameter. Please remember this. There are other ways of changing blood flow. 
but one of the main clever ways that brain and other factors uh, tissue factors tissue need they manipulate the circulation is by changing the diameter of the attendant arteries and veins and by contraction or relaxation of their walls the increased or decreased blood flow is achieved that's point number three point number four cardiac output the amount of blood that is pumped into the circulation per unit time is the sum of all local tissue flows this is a point which is uh, pretty straightforward at the moment so whatever the requirement of the body is the heart responds to it by increasing or decreasing its cardiac output in exercise or in stress you, you require more blood to flow uh, through the body the cardiac output would oblige and increase so cardiac output really is the sum of all local uh, tissue blood flows this is a straightforward point uh, so here I, I, I've, I've, I've uh, used this diagram just to illustrate this point here. The, the heart will increase the flow by pumping extra more vigorously and more number of times. So heart rate and contract, contractility that you've already uh, discussed in heart physiology, it will increase, uh, for example, in certain scenarios. So the flow will increase. Now, this is the arterial system and what is not shown is the tributaries to the tissues. So just look at the, look at the way I am moving this arrow. These are the tributaries to the, all those tissues. So each blood flow, if you just add them up, should come up to the total cardiac output. Basically, this is what the point number four is. Finally, and extremely importantly, arterial blood pressure. So it should say arterial blood pressure, all right? So the blood pressure in the arterial side of the circulation is, it's like a holy thing. It's, it's extremely important. And it's not to be meddled with by routine life maneuvers. And hence it's controlled pretty much independently. And you, later you will see that about uh, two, two and about five, six regulatory mechanisms are focused on arterial blood pressure regulation something which is very very important and you can uh, maybe have a, have a have an idea that arterial blood pressure why is it so important because basically it's the pressure inside this side of the circulation which determines tissue flow so if you have a fluctuating arterial blood pressure the tissues cannot really depend on a sustained regular routine blood flow to themselves hence their metabolism can get affected so you need to have this pretty much constant so that the supply to individual tissues is constant okay so with this we have uh, finished the initial the level zero and we'll be talking more on hemodynamics uh, and uh, the rest of this in the third uh, video inshallah Thank you.